So anyone here is already familiar with exception handling? You can raise your hand or type in the chat. Yeah, Vijit has a little knowledge. So what does little knowledge mean? So I also have a little knowledge. The process of handling unwanted bugs or errors. And uh, so Abhijit, so have you used it in Python or in any other language? All right. Anyone else? Right. So as a so let's let's just start now. Uh, so as Avijit just said, uh, what is an exception? Uh, exception is a signal that indicates an error or an unexpected event that has occurred during the execution of a program. So here we are uh, doing it in Python. So this can be in any other language also. Uh, and uh, so exceptions can occur for a variety of reasons, such as user provided providing invalid input, file not being found, network connection failing, uh, any other uh, situations where you might uh, expect an exception. Anyone? Type error, value error. Right, right. So what is a value error? Infinity divided by zero, zero divided by something. So uh, divide by zero is a, like a separate exception. Uh, it is specifically called divide uh, zero division error. So as you can see right here, this. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Uh, we did the same data type error division by zero, right? There's also an error, uh, name error. And uh, let's see what else do we have. We have file not found. There's also an error for uh, out of index. Uh, if you try to access a value that is uh, not, so try to access an index that is not present in the, in any object, if let's say an error array or a list. So that's when you get that. Uh, Avijit is saying key in dictionary. Yeah, so if you try to access a key in a dictionary, which is not present in the dictionary, that's when you get, get a key error. So like these are some types of situations where you might expect uh, an exception to occur. Now, uh, when an exception occurs, the program stops ex executing and uh, Python generates an error message that describes the exception. So whenever uh, your code encounters an exception, it stops right there and uh, Python does not get to execute the code after the exception. So this is this is where exception handling comes in. So uh, what you have to do, what you intend to do is you try to uh, predict 
some exceptions uh, that might occur in your code and uh, try to handle them in such a way that the code does not stop right there. The code should continue uh, executing after the except even after the exception. So in 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 case of an exception, you actually program your uh, code to do certain things. Uh, so this error message can be helpful in understanding what went wrong, uh, but it doesn't provide a way to recover from the error and continue executing the program. So without exception handling, uh, the the code does not know what to do after an, an exception occurs. It has to stop right there. Exception handling is a way to handle exceptions in a controlled manner and continue executing the program. That's that's mostly it. So uh, Python has some keywords which are used in exception handling. Uh, the most prominent keywords are try and accept. So whenever, uh, so this is an example. So uh, within this try block, whatever code you have written, uh, whenever this code generates an exception, uh, the code execution will just uh, go to the accept block and, and then execute the accept block. So here, what is happening? You are, you are trying this code. So uh, result equals to 10 upon zero. Okay, so Mary is asking uh, how to know in advance about the error, what kind of error uh, we will encounter. So, uh, so this, this actually comes with experience, I would say. So for example, if you are, let's say, writing a simple program to, let's say, divide two numbers and you are taking the two numbers as an input from the user. Now you have to cover all the edge cases of this program. Uh, so you know your, uh, like the limitations of your program, like uh, the denominator cannot be zero. Uh, both numbers, uh, both both the inputs should, should actually, be, actually be numbers. So they can either be integer or a float and uh, they should not be a string. They should not be any other data type like a list or a dictionary, et cetera. So these, these situations you have to handle. Now here you can use exception handling. And uh, so how to, so uh, back to your question, how to uh, predict uh, what kind of error you'll encounter. You just try to imagine all the situations that can happen in your code. That's how you will get to know what all can happen in your code. and. Uh, that's how you can get to know the errors. Now, uh, this this uh, try block here, uh, you must know that uh, whenever you try to divide with zero, uh, it it Python can't do that. So this line will result in an error. So let's just try this line independently. So result equals to ten upon zero. What it gives, it gives a zero division error. And the, what is the description of this error? Division by zero. So, so Mary is asking, uh, just like multiple else if condition, right, right, it, it is similar to that. So just that uh, you don't use if and else, you, you use try and accept for most of the cases. So we'll come to that, uh, like how do you, handle multiple exceptions also. So here you are only, so here we are only handling the zero division error because uh, this is the only condition that we want to cover for. So we can just do accept. Uh, so whenever there will be a zero division error, this code will get executed. So since we we can see that this is actually, an, actually a zero division error. So this code will run and this is the output. We are printing error cannot divide by zero. Uh, this is just the description of the code above. Uh, then, uh, so this is how you can, uh, just like Sumed was asking, this is how you can handle multiple exceptions. So let's say uh, here in the try block, you try to do something. Uh, in this line, you, you are trying to convert this string into an integer. 
now this is not possible uh, because uh, this is actual actual text like alpha alphabets uh, so in case this was actually a string with a number inside it so for example you try to convert this uh, character one into an integer this is actually uh, possible in python uh, might not be possible in other languages uh, like other low level languages like c or c++ uh, but this python actually allows you to do this also, I think JavaScript also allows you to do this. So, uh, but here we are trying to convert this string into an integer. So let's see what, what error do we get when we try to do this. You get a value error. Invalid literal for int with base 10. Right? So uh, we are predicting this, that this, this might happen. So we specifically tell python to uh, uh, to check whether it is a value error so if it is a value error this is what we want to do we want to print error invalid integer in case it is any other uh, exception then this is what we, what we want to do error something went wrong because we don't know what went wrong and we are also printing the class of the uh, this exception so this is actually the name of the exception. Uh, if you run this, you will get this error invalid integer because it, it, it was a value error. Let's let's uh, do one thing. Uh, let's remove this. Let's do 10 upon zero. So now they should ideally give a zero division error and it should go to this exception and it should print this. Let's see what happens. Something went wrong and this is the class, zero division error. We'll also uh, later at the end of the session, we'll also learn how to create your own exception classes, a custom class for exception. Uh, so is asking, uh, if you don't know, then give by class. Uh, sorry, Sumedh, I don't understand. Uh, can you uh, unmute yourself? So suppose if we don't know the class, so always we can uh, we can take the exception and print the exception by e dot underscore class underscore. Right, right. So uh, printing an exception uh, can be done. So just like this, print e, e dot uh, dunder class dunder. So uh, I have one confusion uh, that mm -hmm. here we are taking a exception as e. And in above uh, zero divided by error, some uh, something was there. So in the both the case, uh, in both uh, both block, yes, the first one. Yeah. So uh, if I write the some other part of the code here, I mean, so basically some addition of two number now. So that code will that block of code will execute in the exception part. So because instead of this, no, 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 no. Yeah. that is there. Suppose this is there, it yeah. got exception. I mean, so it's uh, zero divided by error. Now it will print. Yeah. yeah. Now, if I now I uh, suppose if suppose uh, I want to overwrite the zero, it is a mistake. And now I want to put the correct number. Right. Suppose two. So overwriting of the result equal to ten divided by two. So that is possible in the exception part or not? Yeah, yeah. So whenever the try block fails, yes, the whole exception block uh, gets run. So okay. Whatever you do in so this, I can reassign the result equal to ten divided by two or the user input. Correct, correct. You can do that. So if you do this and later you, you can print result also. Uh, it should be inside the exception or outside the exception printing of result. Uh, it can it can be anywhere actually. Both will work. What will happen if we put inside or outside uh, of the block? Uh, it will be the result will be the same. Uh, okay. So if you just do this, uh, here this is result. Okay. And if you do it outside it, this is it. Oh, okay. Thank you. So uh, it, it might not be the case in other situations, but here it is equivalent. Sure. Thank you.
uh, Avijit is asking, uh, so the last except is serving as the else statement here. Yes. Uh, so for this one, uh, this is yeah equivalent to that. Uh, but uh, here you can actually catch the exception uh, and actually print the exception. In, in an else statement, you uh, I don't think you will be able to do that. Right, so uh, where were we? So also another thing, right? So you have except in the exception, the last block you have, you're using the class um, to show, you know, what kind of uh, error you're encountering. What happens if you remove the class? Does it show you, you know, where exactly is the error? Like this? Yep. So if you try and execute that. Yeah. Uh, and by zero. So uh, what it does is it does not give you the class of the exception. It gives you the description of the exception. Uh -huh. uh, when you are printing the class, it, it gives you the class. So this is the oh. name. So class. basically, it will be useful, uh, uh, Ashit, that uh, if you don't know error, make some mistakes and what kind of error it is getting up, take the exception and then write the program that way, another way around. Uh, no, I, ideally, you should just consider all the cases that can happen in your code okay. and then write your try and accept blocks. Oh yeah, but if that is another way because means right now we do that means class. Yeah. Now we got it the class as a division error. Now we can pass as an exception uh, that so, thing and then. Yeah, so if you if you want to iterate on it, uh, just uh, whenever you face a new condition that you did not think of, you can include that also. Okay, got it. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is. Uh, this we have discussed. Then uh, this is the else block. So like Abhijit was saying, uh, Python gives you an uh, gives you a choice to include an else block here. So just like if else. So what it does is, uh, so we have the try block that is the same. We have the accept block, and uh, if an exception is raised, Python will jump to the accept block and execute the code inside it. If no exception is raised, it will skip the except block and execute the else block instead. So Abhijit, so uh, in the last one, this was not the same actually, because uh, if if no exception is raised, then, then the else block is uh, run. So try and else both are run in this case. And in the previous case, the last except block will not be run if there's no, there's no exception. Then, uh, yeah, so the else block provides a way to execute that uh, the code that should only run if no exception is raised. So what we're doing here is, uh, so, so, so made like, like uh, you, you were asking earlier, uh, where should you write the print result thing? So this is, this is a neat way to write it. So in the else block. Okay. But uh, what we did was also fine. Now, uh, this is another example. Uh, we, what we are trying to do is we are trying to access, we, can, we are trying to read a text file. And uh, in case the file was not found, this, this uh, we are printing error file not found. And uh, uh, otherwise, if there's, there's no exception, uh, then we are printing the contents of the file. So I hope everyone knows the this uh, with keyword. Uh, this with keyword is used to actually like uh, access files or or also write to files, read and write both. Uh, Ashit, uh, uh, one uh, regarding else, uh, there is a one another keyword is there finally correct? Correct. Yeah, we'll come to that. Yeah. So this is the finally keyword. So what this does is, uh, 
So this first, uh, like always, this try block is run. If there is a zero division error, uh, then this is run. Then the finally block uh, provides a way to execute the code. That should always run regardless of whether an exception is raised or not. So this is actually equivalent to uh, uh, if you even uh, don't uh, write this finally keyword and just do this print outside of everything, this is equivalent to that. Uh, this is uh, probably not much used because it is kind of redundant, but uh, there, there is this functionality, so good to know about it. So what is happening here is we are dividing 10 upon 5. Uh, in case there is a zero division error, which is not there right now, so this, this would have been printed, but it is, it is not there. So then first else will be printed uh, because there was no exception and then whether there was an exception or not, this finally will get printed. So uh, we'll see this else output. The result is uh, two. And also this code will always run. This is the output. Uh, so maybe asking uh, difference between else and finally. So the difference is that uh, else, the else block is run uh, when there, there was no exception in the try block. And finally block is run, whether or not there was an exception. Finally block does not care uh, whether there was an exception or not. Uh, so maybe, uh, is it clear? Yeah. So this was the finally keyword. Uh, this is a similar example. We are trying to read a file. Uh, if if there was a fi file not found error, this will get run. Uh, in case there was no exception, this will get run. And this will always run, uh, no matter what. So the try except finally block provides a way to handle exceptions in a more fine-grained way then try accept and try accept else blocks. By using the finally block, you can execute code that should always run regardless of whether there's an exception or not. Uh, so now there's a keyword called raise. Uh, anyone knows about what is raise? Okay. Uh, so basically, so, yeah. So, sure. uh, so in regards to the finally block, uh, so I just want to give an example so people can understand you yeah. know, where it can be used. Uh, so can you imagine a scenario uh, where you know, you're connecting to database, right? So when you connect to a database, you open a connection to the database, right? And then you do whatever you want to do, right? You write code to extract data or push data or whatsoever. So all of that part would go into try block, right? And if there is an error in connecting to the database, that would go into the exception part, right? Yeah. And the place where you would use finally block is to close the connection, right? Because at the end of the day, you want to close connection to the database, regardless of all your, all your work, all your code ran or not, right? So that's where you can use finally block. And even in this example, right? So here, Ashit is using with keyword. Uh, the reason why we use with keyword is you don't have to worry about closing, right? So once you open the, once you read the file, you usually have to close it if you don't use with keyword, right? Yeah. If you only use open keyword, but right. So in this scenario, if you were to not use with, you would have to close the file before you can uh, you know, move on to new stuff. So that's where, again, you can use finally block, right? So you yes, can uh, close uh, in this the file. Case, uh -huh. In this case, uh, if the error was in the opening command uh, only, so then you won't be able to close the file, right? Uh, similarly with the connection also. Yeah. So if you encounter an error in the 
connection or opening a file, then yeah, it will straight away go to exception block, right? Yeah. But if it opens, if it makes a connection, then you want to close that connection, then you need to have finally block it. So that's where yeah. that comes from. So, uh, was someone saying about the race command? No. So, uh, the raise command is to, uh, you can actually raise an exception by yourself. That's, that's what the raise command is for. So let's see this function. Uh, this is a divide function where we want to divide X, X upon Y. Uh, and, uh, in case Y equals to zero, uh, we are raising the exception zero division error. So, uh, yeah. So what we are trying to do is, in this example, we have we have function called divide. Uh, yeah, and then we can also give a custom error message, which we are giving here. Cannot divide divide by zero. Otherwise, it 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 returns a result. Now we are using a try except else block, uh, with ten and zero. Since y equal to zero, uh, this divide function raises, raises an exception, zero division error. Then it goes to the except block for this one and uh, prints the error message. Right? So, uh, so the difference here is we, uh, we can give a custom error message here and we can catch that in this variable error and uh, we can print this one and if there were no zero division error uh, you would have uh, gone to else and then printed the result so the raise keyword provides a way to create custom exceptions and raise them yourself this can be useful is if you want to signal an error condition or exit a block of code, uh, code early by raising an exception, you can halt the execution of the current code block and jump to a higher level error handler. So which is the saying, uh, for example, like age cannot be less than 18. We can manually define this in error, right? So uh, uh, in case this was a function which took an age and uh, you want the age to not be less than 18, you can put an if condition in the in there and then raise this exception. Now, how how do you uh, actually make your own exception class? So the first question, uh, why do you need a need a custom exception class? So just just like Avijit just gave an example. Uh, let's say we want the age to be not less than eighteen. So that's where we can actually define our own exception class. Uh, so here's an example. What I'm doing here is. Uh, let's skip this one. Let's see this one first. Uh, say uh, uh, you are trying to divide by zero. And uh, what we are trying to do is uh, if exception, then uh, th after this, we, I'm just checking whether this is a zero division error or not. If it is, I'm what I'm doing is uh, I'm trying to do uh, first make an object of my my exception class so let's go back to this uh, this is my error uh, this is my exception class uh, which i am creating by myself so how do you do that first decide the name of your class uh, this is this is what the name i chose uh, this is the base class uh, basically the parent class so exception class is like uh, predefined in python so this is what you use this is the constructor and here you are creating a uh, variable that is message, which is only accessible to the object of objects of this class. So this is my message. And uh, there's another function called this uh, dunder uh, string str. And this is used, this is also a predefined function. Uh, so basically you are rewriting this function, basically overwriting the default function here. And uh, what you're doing is you are just returning the message, whatever you define. So whenever you call this function, uh, this is, uh, you are basically calling this one. 
and it is returning this message. So that's why you get this aha uh, mm -hmm. you fit. Uh, there's another way to do this. Uh, you can just in any way uh, write uh, print directly here and print the exceptions and whatever you want to print. But that does not result in a clean code. Uh, so if you want a cleaner code, that's when you actually define your own classes and you can you get to reuse them again and again. Also, if uh, this also allows for project specific exception handling. So let's say uh, you have a big project and you you face some uh, custom exceptions uh, all the time in that project, which is specific to that project, you don't face those in other projects. So that's when you can define your own classes for that particular project and then reuse them again and again in there. Uh, uh, here's another. Uh, yeah. Can you go a little bit of here? You are explaining the init uh, self self dot message. You failed. Yeah. This is clear. Not five, six is not clear. Line five and line six. Right. So uh, whenever you are calling this uh, my error function, that's when this function gets called. This is a, like, uh, this is not, we are not naming this by ourselves. This is actually defined in Python itself. Okay. So we are not calling this now. We are calling my, my error. Correct. Yeah. So, uh, when you are calling my error, yeah, this this automatically gets called and this returns this message. No, first the constructor get called, no? And yeah, yeah. Then... constructor is called. That that's yeah. right. And after that, the string is called. After that, is string uh, first constructor, then a string automatically it will call. Correct, correct. Okay, so whatever will be the return message in the str, it will override the message of init. So in, it, in, in it, we are not sending any message. Uh, we are just defining a variable. Yeah. So uh, when you are, so uh, in it does not return anything over here. Okay. Yeah. Return is only in the string. Is it possible to uh, return it in uh, line three also? Uh, we can try that. I haven't tried it. Let's see. So. You just want to return this uh, send dot message. Yeah, it does not work. So, uh, in it should return none, uh, not string. So, it should not return anything actually. In it is not supposed to return things. So, in the in it, you only <clears throat> use it to. Uh, you know, you define your variables. So any variable uh, that you'd use, let's say inside your class anywhere, uh, you can actually define it in, in it. And then those can be used uh, anywhere else. Like for example, here, uh, line five, that's a method that Ashita has defined, right? Now that can be any method, right? But in Python, uh, for a string representation, uh, there's this, uh, underscore underscore string. So this can be used for any string objects, right? Um, and because we want to return a string, right? Which is a self dot message, we're using that on line okay. five. Okay, got it, thank you. So are we just saying by instantiation, instantiating the constructor, the message variable is created, right? Uh, the return message would not be displayed uh, of the string message if the string message is not defined. Correct, correct. So whenever you, you want to sh uh, show a message, this this function has to be created. It's another example. Uh, I've, I'm defining a custom uh, exception class, my type error. So what's my aim here? Uh, I want to create a list and uh, I want to restrict that list to be of uh, only integers. Now, uh, Whenever some some new number is appended to the list, uh, I want to check whether that 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 is an integer or not. So that so I what I'm doing is I'm creating a class my integer list. Uh, 
in the constructor, I'm defining a, an empty list. That is my list. Now, uh, this function, uh, I'm defining a function for add, adding the items because I, I don't want to allow anyone to append anything on it. So I'm defining a function for it, uh, which will take in the, the element that you want to append to it, append to it. So this, let's say this element is a now, if not is in, is instance a comma int. So this is checking whether a is int or not. Uh, if it is not int, then we want to raise this error. So, and what we are sending in it. Uh, so here I'm, I've defined the constructor as self and data type. So it takes in this data type. So I'm taking type of a and, uh, uh, I, I want to return this message that this data type is not allowed enter only integers. So I'm raising this exception and, uh, outside this, uh, uh, so whenever this exception is raised, the code will stop. And this, this thing won't be executed if, if there was an exception. Uh, this function is just to show print the list. So uh, when we try this, uh, here I'm creating a, an object, my list object, uh, list object dot add items one. So here A is one. So it, it successfully appends it. Uh, now I try to append uh, this string, I should. Now this this gives an error. Uh, what what it uh, what the message shows it the error type is my type error. That is the uh, the class that I just made. And what is the message? This this data type is not allowed. Enter only integers. Just like the message I just uh, put in. Data type, this data type is not allowed. Enter only integers. And uh, after this we can actually uh, use this uh, show list thing, uh, this, this function uh, show list. So we'll find that only this one was appended in it. So if I just run this, so when I run this, it's, it stops here, but this, this got executed. Now, if I just do show list, it will show one. If I try to add other other elements as well, we can do that. Two, three. Now it should be one, two, and three. So any doubts? Uh, yeah. Like entering alphabets in H field. Right, 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 Aviji. So whenever you want to do like a data validation thing, uh, whether you are actually entering the right data, right data type or right values of data, you can do this. Uh, so Mary is asking, please explain line six is instance, right? So what this function does is it just checks whether this variable is of this data type or not. So if, if I can do is instance one comma int, this should return true. So here one is actually a, an integer. If I try to do uh, with a string, let's say I do ashes an int, it should return false. If I try to do uh, yeah, got it. Uh, if I try to do string, this is returning true. So it just takes the data. So this is actually equivalent to type of something equals equals int. So type of one equals equals int. So this is equivalent to this. So any questions or uh, anything to add? Just a quick question to everyone. So 
did you guys learn anything from today's session or was there something you already knew it's just that it wasn't clear to you before and now it's clear yeah it was unclear now it is pretty much clear how it is used how we can create custom one good awesome yeah getting the basics right is like very important i mean there's no advanced stuff for try except right it's just simple to use except how do you use it in your use cases right and where do you use it that's more important i'll be sending out a poll right now uh, so just answer that as well That's good. Custom exception is good. Yeah, regarding sessions, yeah, we'll be doing uh, this couple more sessions we'll be having soon. Uh, we have a Lambda function, how to use Lambda functions, maps, and filters. That will be the next one. And then we also have a, another session on date time. So what you can do with the date time library. And so we'll be doing that as well. So there's two more sessions coming up. <clears throat> in case if you guys have missed out any of the previous sessions uh, feel free to go check out uh, our youtube channel we have posted it there um so there was a the first session was very in-depth on basics uh data structures so less dictionaries on all of that so uh, there was another session which was on, I don't, I don't actually remember what it was on, but <laughs> I should kind of remind me. Uh, the, I think the first session was on uh, inbuilt functions. The second uh -huh. session was on functions and methods. Right. Is, yeah. Uh, so I put in the link for the YouTube channel in the chat. So feel free to... Uh, go there subscribe subscribe to us and uh, watch the previous webinars yeah we also did a session on uh, github so if people are not familiar with github if you have used github but as as a single user uh, you can go check it out we have tried you know showing it how it can be used as part of a team uh, there's a lot of stuff that you do as part of a team and that's how it is used in industry. So go check it out. It's, it's there. Regarding object oriented programming, uh, we'll be doing that. Uh, we just wanted to get the basics done first. Uh, so yeah, we'll think about a session for that. Yeah. So yeah, let's do object oriented as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So Bala, uh, we'll send you the this notebook uh, via email. Also, okay. also everyone, uh, I've put in the link to a form. Uh, so if you want to get the refund for this uh, masterclass, you can fill this form. Any other questions in general? It can be anything. It doesn't have to be uh, about this session. Data science or anything, data analysis, whatever. <clears throat> Job market scenario. But yeah, we'll try and do a session on that. So Abhijit, what's yeah, your yeah. background? Yeah. Are you... Are you already uh, into a data field or are you looking to enter into it? Yeah, hi. Um, so I have two and a half years of uh, data analyst experience. Uh, then that was back in 2021 when I left my job and uh, I was doing this MS in data science from Scalar, the next tech platform. So right now looking for uh, data scientist opportunities, but uh, I'm just getting data analyst or business analyst the role. Currently you are a data analyst. Uh, no, I worked for data analyst for 2.5 years. Okay. Then then you are doing doing the masters. Yeah, it's about to get completed, but uh, hardly any data scientist. 
also uh, i wanted to ask that i have seen a uh, few linkedin profiles where people have directly started their career as a data analyst like ashish you have uh, yeah. but there are some people who have uh, worked for 3 and 4 years as a data analyst and then they have got data scientist opportunity so how does that work so uh i think it all depends on your uh the kind of role you apply for so actually if if you end up applying for data analyst roles it is easier to get into right uh, a data scientist role for a fresher is kind of tough to get into uh, but if you keep trying you will eventually get into it uh, but i think most most people don't have that much patience to uh, stick with the interview processes uh, that long so i think they just get into a data analyst role first uh, but yeah uh, there's nothing bad with a data analyst analyst role uh, so you have already been one uh, uh, mithul any thoughts yeah i mean so i started out as a data analyst too right regardless of whatever field you come from no matter how technical the field i i come from theoretical physics background and i still uh, ended up you know starting out as a data analyst uh but here's one thing right now it depends on what kind of uh, organization she go and work for right uh, i've seen some organizations they don't really care about the titles uh so they only hire data analyst there is no data scientist at all but all the work that they do it's of is of data science right uh so you know you know titles are just titles right? but if you're doing stuff you know that's also surrounding you know what a actual data scientist would do you're still good right like i was in my first role i was hired as a data analyst in healthcare in healthcare mostly you know people get titles at data analyst even if they're doing stuff at data science and that was a scenario for me right but i picked up a lot of uh, stuff you know that a data scientist would do so i would say yeah if you get a data analyst role you know don't think that oh, it's a uh, you're stepping down no it's it's good uh, you can uh, pick up a lot of things along the way yeah i think the title of the role is kind of blurring out these days yeah. and uh, so my <clears throat> previous company did not even have a data analyst role at all uh, so there was only a data scientist role and the data scientist was supposed to do everything related to data uh there was separate role for data engineering of course uh but yeah no data analyst role and i've seen some companies have no data scientist role only business analyst or data analyst roles yeah so sumeet about the interview prep series uh, we are actually working on it now uh, you will you will hear from us soon yeah. yeah try to pick up as much skills as you can don't rely on you know just your masters program or whatever um you know the amount of skill sets that you will gain uh the better you qualify for you know better roles uh better opportunities so try to learn you know as much stuff as you can also at data to production we uh, run a <clears throat> mentorship program uh that is a one on one program uh, where we go through an end to end project in data science and uh, yeah it is a two month long program uh, so if you are interested feel free to contact us yeah so i'll just share the architecture uh, if people are interested um so uh, i mean we we started this slightly different than a boot camp or any courses uh so it's more like on the mentoring mentorship the rather than a you know course uh so you come and work with us for a period of 2 months and in that period of 2 months you would end up building an architecture which looks like this right so if you were to go work for any startup let's say and if you are the first data scientist this is the kind of work that you would do you are in charge of building the entire architecture by yourself right and this is how things are done so we have together uh this pipeline that we, anyone can come and build with us in a period of 2 months and in the process you get to learn all of these things right so how do you use python with uh, cloud services uh, sql it can be mysql or postgresql github 
but in a collaborative mode, not just as a solo user. Uh, CICD pipelines, now I've seen you know, data scientists doing a lot of DevOps side of stuff as well. Um, and you know, MLOps, if you're a machine learning engineer. So we have added that as well. How do you do CICD uh, with Jenkins or Airflow? <clears throat> we have also added uh, Circle CI for local. Uh, if you're gonna try, you know, some companies use Airflow Jenkins and use Circle CI. So we have added that as well in the pipeline. And the most important part is how do you automate the entire process, right? You're a data scientist. Uh, you know, you shouldn't be running your scripts manually every day or so on, you know, so automation is the key, right? So you can go do some more projects once you automate one of the project, right? Um, so we have added that as well. And uh, so, yeah, so you'd learn about data engineering, you'd learn about data science, you'd learn about deployment, and you know, how can you think of your data science project as a product and how to sell it, right? Um, and uh, the best practices, some of the best practices, uh, we strongly, you know, put in a lot of time uh, and pressure on best practices, because if you're not a coder, if you come from a different background, uh, you know, you don't know best practices and you want your projects to last longer. So that's where that comes in and software engineering principles. Right? Uh, and what do you get out of it? Well, you get to work with both of us. Uh, we both are experienced data scientists uh, working for big organizations. And I work for the Catalan. Uh, so the Catalan, it's a sports company. Uh, you might know it. There's a lot of the Catalans in India. I uh, work for the Capital Canada. Actually, it's been working for, oh, things changed. <laughs> he was working for Firmal Finance up until now. Uh, and now he's the head of data science at this company. Uh, well, he'll be starting a data science role at a bank. I'm not going to give the name <laughs> right now. So, so yeah. Um, and it's a one to one mentoring. Uh, so, we don't do it in batches. You might see boot camps and stuff where you know you'd go and uh, study courses and batch of 30, 40, 50 people. Here we're doing one to one. Uh, so it's slightly different. So it's a lot of our time that we put in. We invest our time in you uh, so you can grow and gain skills. So yeah, we, you can reach out to us, you can fill out the form. Um, also about pricing, yeah, we don't charge as much as boot camps. Uh, we don't even charge probably 20% or 15% of boot camps. We don't even charge that much. Uh, it's pretty minimal. So yeah, feel free to reach out to us. And uh, uh, we had a couple of people already finished it. If you would like to learn you know, about this, get some feedback, you can go and talk to them. One of them is Sumit, who's in the, uh, who's attending today. He's our current student. We'll be finishing up actually tomorrow. So you can, you can talk to him. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> that's about it. All right, uh, any questions, clarifications? Yeah, if you guys have any questions or anything, uh, let me know, let us know, and we can reach out to us. Also, uh, feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn. Uh, let me put our links in the chat. This is mine. <clears throat> this is Mithul's. So feel free to connect with us. And uh, that's it. Uh, so thanks everyone for joining. Uh, see you soon. Keep an eye on uh, our LinkedIn post, Ashit's uh, and mine, mostly Ashit's, because <laughs> he posts a lot. Uh, we'll be posting about the next sessions, uh, Lambda functions. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Thank, Thank you, everyone. You.